Welcome to the Experience Focus Leaders Podcast. I am super excited to have Paul Pritchard here with us. Uh, Paul is the group CEO of Overdose, which is an independent global commerce consul consultancy, originally founded in New Zealand, but now uh, operating uh, with a team of over 500 across nine countries and supporting some amazing brands that you love. Uh, so without further ado, Paul, welcome welcome to the podcast and tell us a little bit about your journey from a graphic designer to a group CEO. Uh, I'm sure we have a lot of folks that you know would love to kind of hear how do you how do you build that um, skill set to uh, to lead an agency? Alex, thank you so much for having me on. Really excited to be here. Um, you know, I've been following a little bit of your journey as well, and I think there's a lot of parallels in the way that Relay2 has started out and, and kind of the journey that you've been on as well. So I guess, you know, if we talk back a few years, nearly maybe 20 or so years ago when I first started out, um, you know, we were really at the at the end of the print life cycle right but the internet was starting to come through and i was really designing brand for brands and and um and publications and uh and and print stuff basically but i saw fundamentally the shift coming towards digital and was really keen to just jump in boots and all and and figure out what it was about and so i left that environment after three or four years having you know built up the skill of this craft that i thought was pretty impressive and then met a whole bunch of new people who were at the cutting edge of you know building emails building websites building you know mobile when that started to come through i, I remember when the iphone came out for example and all of a sudden it just changed the way that people interacted with the internet um and all of these exciting things have happened throughout my career and i guess to get from Point A as a as a fresh faced graphic designer to uh, point B, which is today as a group CEO of uh, an amazing company with with a a group of amazing people. The journey was really dictated by an appetite and a curiosity about what's next. Mm. And I think if I look at the one thing that defines me is this interest in everything that keeps coming at us and trying to figure out ways to interpret that to help help businesses help people really adopt and, and win in that space. And that really is the foundation of our business as well. Um, so Overdose, you know, we we were born seven years ago. Um, you mentioned that, you know, we were a couple of guys sitting in the back office of a of a merchant down in New Zealand, uh, you know, helping them really navigate the, the commerce landscape and figure out how to bring their products um, to life on the internet. And over that time, and in a very short space of time, all of a sudden that business was going, need, we need help to build it. Mm. Uh, and that built out our development resource. Um, we had some really good people that we'd worked with historically out of Ukraine. Okay. Uh, and they've been on this journey with us since day one. Uh, and to go from that to an appetite to expand, to become a true respected um, global commerce consultancy, that's been our ambition you know, since day one and, and to get to where we are now is phenomenal, but I feel like we've only just started, you know, we're, we're, we're less than halfway there, put it that way. And, and I think, you know, this is really amazing because we, uh, I think we share this belief that it doesn't matter where you are physically, right? It doesn't matter who you are, you know, if you have the passion and the energy in this, in this world that we live in, you could go from New Zealand to the world right and absolutely you know we we all know and and many in the kind of small business and mid-sized business community are using a, a great product built in originally in new zealand called zero which is you know a, a great expert um of, of of your country and you're you're building the same platform for uh for digital commerce uh consultancy so Tell us a little bit about what are some of the challenges and ahas that you you've kind of um, ran into, and and I think anybody right like is is really eager to build a global platform right now, whether in a large country or in a smaller country. So uh, that could be great uh, lesson for our audience. 
Yeah, I mean, I think how long have you got? Because the lessons that we've learned in seven years have been hard, fast, and uh, sometimes quite. Well, you, we use behavioral science. So basically, in behavioral science, you kind of anything between three and seven points will be remembered. Anything over that is sort of a hard one. So somewhere between three and seven bullets. <laughs> well, I'll, how about I start with one bullet? And I think right. the one bullet that is the most, uh, is the biggest lesson that we've learned is how to, is how to work with people wherever they are, right? And how to build trust, connection, um, ownership and accountability through a team that is distributed all around the world, right? And I think, you know, we've just lived through probably the most transformational disruptive uncertain passage of time that you know a generation if not two generations has lived through and that has really taught us two things one that faith in humans will pay itself off mm -hmm. um, the ability to provide safe supportive environments for people to turn up every day and bring the best of them to work and and i think that's a true thing wherever you are in the world fundamentally being able to support people both through these digital channels, like the one that we're on at the moment, um, not being able to travel for a number of years, which right. I think really, that was a really tough thing to overcome. Um, to ride the wave of global economic um, challenges, right? Like foreign exchange became such a really big, big thing for us. The ability to pay people in US dollars and in, um, and in the pound and in euros and, and and everything. And I don't know if if any of your listeners pay any attention to the New Zealand dollar on the FX um, exchanges, but it's it's not it's it's not a very uh, high ranking um, currency. So that was probably you know those two lessons really understanding how to work with people properly, give them the environment to be the best they are, support them to do that, catch them when they fall, um, give them the space to be great. And then just watching all of the levers in our business, um, particularly financially to ensure that we're stable, that we have runway, that we can support the growth. You know, when you grow as fast as we have, we've got, you know, we've got close to 500 people and it's happened over seven years and they're employed all over the world. There has to be something there that binds them together. There has to be a culture that is created that allows them to feel like they're part of something bigger than what it is um, that they sit in front of on the team that they're with as well so well, let's people let's is the biggest click thing on that let's double click on that really quickly so the the culture well you cannot meet in person right and especially even in the best of times a trip from new zealand to ukraine would not be a you know, <laughs> trivial affair uh but you know certainly during pandemic i you know or during you know crazy times we live in right now this is this is much mm -hmm. um so, you know, we um, we think a lot about, you know, how do we create always on resources? Like, how do we create the types of content uh, for internal and, you know, ultimately for the customer uh, customer experiences that that really travels, uh, you know, and, you know, helps people, you know, get was that was minimal amount of fuss, get get to kind of the right answers. Um, what have you done, right? Like to 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 try to you know support both massive growth and this distributed structure that you have, and you know, I, and how many clients do you have over over a few hundred? Over three hundred now, yeah. yeah, right. And you have you know clients that are a lot of them, and they're demanding, right? I, I saw some of the brands, and I'm like, oof, all of them. You know, I wear all like, of them, uh, and just to 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 brag a little bit, what what are some of the brands that are globally known? that you're supporting right now? I saw uh, the uh, global brands. Like uh, we work with brands like Patagonia, Goodyear tires. Um, we work with uh, some high fashion brands. You know, we've done a lot of work with Karl Lagerfeld, uh, Donna Karan. Um, those are some of the bigger, more recognized global right, I need to change my outfit. I'm not yeah. going to hold off on this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm definitely not wearing uh, Karl Lagerfeld at the moment, but um Look, I think it's as it's it's as much about the international brands, the ones that cross borders comfortably, than it, as it is about the local businesses as well. So, you know, some of the some of the best mid market merchants in Australia or in Southeast Asia or in the US or in parts of Europe, and definitely down here in New Zealand, um, 
they trust us to to lead out their digital commerce strategies and to help them build digital assets and trade those digital assets as well. And so I think, you know, ultimately, if you go back to that people thing, whether they're your staff, whether they're your clients, whether they're your partners, mm. if you treat people like people and you see the human being behind the brand, behind the the logo, you know, behind the computer screen, I think you you tend to get to the point of what's important a lot faster. And and if I was to say what's our secret source, our secret source is the depth of interest, curiosity, and understanding of the businesses that we work with. Mm. Um, and so that's infectious, right? And when you have that enthusiasm for businesses and when you have that enthusiasm for your team, you know, they want to be a part of that as well. I think the other thing that, that stood us well is we couldn't have done what we did so fast without a lot of support internationally. You know, our people, you know, we had three or four people uh, in the Ukraine very early on who were just instrumental to our ability to build out websites really fast and then the ability to support those websites and trade them. You know, that's the backbone of our growth really there. And then to be able to branch that out and and find talent wherever it is. And I think, you know, Alex, you mentioned that early on. Um, you know, we're in a world where access to talent is just so much easier and, and, and faster uh, to grab hold of. We just have to give them the space to be great, right? That's mm -hmm. fundamentally it. Brilliant. And so so what are the, the technical tools right like like now like get let's get to the nitty-gritty so i'm sure you're doing a bunch of zooms and and uh uh and kind of visual interactions is there something that you're doing that's asynchronous and you know what have you learned about that whether it's was the you know enabling your team or mm -hmm. was the customers or is that is that hard like it seems like it's a, it's kind of one of those hard problems where we figure out how to do on the website level but not necessarily in the in the kind of more complex, deeper interactions. Um, so you know, a lot of people are struggling with this. I'm curious, what's been your journey in this? In this, and uh, how do you take your lessons from consumer, you know, brands and applying it in in the in the sort of one to few setting? Yeah, look, I agree. I think um, this this you know the the need to move your whole business online and use these video format. Uh, connections have been fantastic for allowing you to maintain presence and, and be in front of people. You know, the challenge that you always have when you're in these formats is that they have a start and a stop time. And so you have to compress everything into this fixed environment and it doesn't allow that creative spark, you know, that passing in a hallway and mentioning something and, and someone grabbing hold of it and running off with it and coming back with something new. Um, so we have a number of tools that work for us. We use the whole Google suite. So that mm -hmm. that means that we're relatively connected between video and chat and uh, and email um, and the like. We use Slack. That is, mm -hmm. that is just so integral to our business. And it allows just these rapid chats to happen. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can see, you know, our all of agency uh, channel has people popping up and going, hey, does anyone know? You know, where the best bar is in New York because we're visiting there through to I've got this real problem debugging this piece of code. Can someone help me? Right. So it's such a, you know, it becomes this almost community space where people feel like they've got the safety to ask any question and get a whole community behind them to answer it. Um, but I tell you, nothing beats being face to face. So yeah. we now, you know, I, I think we really suffered a lot. Uh, through the 2020, 2021 phase in terms of that human connection. You know, we had a large proportion of our team currently hired within that phase where they'd never met anyone, right? It was all video. And, and you know, the fun times were, you know, a Friday afternoon having a shared drink on an online chat and, and you know, maybe playing some, some online games and stuff like that. Whereas the reality today, you know, I can get on a plane and I can go to Australia or the US or or Asia or Europe, which I do a lot more now. Um, and you can just get so much more done face to face. So I think we have to get back to that concept of physical human interaction, right? That's there's, there's a lot of power there that will add more to what we do. It won't take away, it will just add more. And and I there is it kind of what is it that about the human, you know, the the human experiences or humanizing the digital tools, right? Like so Slack's original mm -hmm. 
ethos was very much that it was kind of humanizing what was what was kind of very automatic transactional digital interaction and by the way i need to give a shout out to slack and google we use we use them um uh yeah well we 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 use everybody i'm, so, I'm sure you you do too as well <laughs> every every technology but and we play well with everyone but we do internally rely on google um and it does we see the velocity of you know uh you know, doing something in Google Slides, and then in our case, we kind of would run it through yeah. to, and you have an instant, you know, microsite, you know, and you kind of get this collaboration phase done in Google effectively, and then the experience phase, and if it, it's we, you know, we've been surprised at the our own velocity that comes from that versus building you know custom sites, which we also do. Um, but then the Slack has been great. And like, and so I have to give a shout out my, uh, Salesforce is one of our customers, uh, and they use Slack also, not just internally, but also to connect, uh, with vendors, for example, like us. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. we have, you know, private groups, um, was, uh, was a Salesforce team and, and, you know, the account managers on our side, and it, it's, it's been great. And sometimes it's like, it's easier to connect with them through this you know, medium than uh, through email because we're all kind of overloaded through this. So sometimes microsites Absolutely. are a way to connect with people um, because they, there is room for connecting there where the, you don't see the same room in mm -hmm. more kind of overloaded mediums where we're, we're, you know, we're just kind of dying in the email hole. So what, what would you say like is the, the breakout besides in human meetings, which you can't do all the time, what, how do you keep that humanity um, more, you know, rolling, you know, in all those times when you cannot meet up in person? Yeah. I mean, I think, and we've just gone through a big process of, of reworking um, our behaviors, right. The, the things that matter to us, the way that people interact and, and act and, and how they turn up every day. And, you know, I, I, I think there's there's two fundamentals. And the reason, you know, just harking back to Google and Slack, the reason that they work so well for us is that they're the collaboration tools. They allow multiple people to come together in, in arenas to be able to work together, right? So you said Google Slides, you know, we could have 15, 20 people working on a presentation yeah. or a proposal or, a you know, a piece of work and you could see exactly where everyone is and what they're doing. You know, we still run financially our our reporting layer through Google Sheets because of just the openness of it in terms, yeah. you know, in terms of interaction and collaboration and Slack's like that as well. All of our clients are in Slack. So all of our people are client facing. Every person in the business will have some interaction with some client at some stage in a week. And so everyone has the ability to jump into different client environments and be pulled into them as well. So it's a really collaborative space. I think the other things that we do Going back to the behaviors is we, you know, and I find most of my job is, is repeating things, right? It is repeating things to audiences all around the world and, and saying them over and over so that they stick, so that they, they settle in. And well, one thing I say to my leadership is we only have two jobs as leaders in our business. The first one is to create a safe and supportive environment for our staff mm -hmm. so that they can build value-based relationships with yeah. our clients, right? And the, the behaviors that we value within our teams are really simple stuff, right? Empathy, so the ability to think and and accept others' points of view and, and not necessarily agree with them, but accept them, right? And that covers a whole raft of things, everything from inclusion through to being able to have a constructive conversation rather than an argument. Um, you know, we believe fundamentally in momentum and momentum is about making decisions fast Mm -hmm. and understanding the consequences, right? The more the, the longer you wait for perfection, the further away from your goal that you get, we believe. So we'd rather move fast, figure out what works, what doesn't, and then adapt. Um, so that's a really key one. Together is probably the, the core, right? The, ability, the, the belief that together we're better than we are individually, that our team is no one individual, right? That goes for every single person in the business, myself included. Um, we are much better together. Uh, and we we make that happen, right? It is just such a core part of what we do. So everyone has someone else they can rely on. We mm -hmm. believe in dual leadership. Um, so every person has another person, almost their yin and yang, right? To be able to think about leadership together rather than just one person's voice running off there. Um, and courage, right? Courage is the, is the kind of key one, really. 
when it comes to being brave enough to have an opinion, brave enough to speak up, brave enough to share your thoughts. Mm. Like, and we create environments to allow people to come forward, whether that's, you know, video groups. Like I've been on all staff calls multiple times this year just to show my face and share my thoughts. But it's a great environment to allow people to come in and ask questions. Mm -hmm. But even those ones that don't feel comfortable, we do a whole bunch of uh, internal anonymous surveys that allow us to get that raw, really raw feedback. So, you know, those people who have got this kind of burning question, but they're afraid to ask or people who are not that happy about certain things, they have a channel where they can go in and, you know, almost that digital suggestion box and then we act on it. Uh, so I think, look, it's a hard, it's hard. It is always hard because you have to work at it continuously, but it's worth it. Always it working. sounds like at the very beginning, you, you kind of said, well, I have to keep repeating and encouraging these sort of behaviors. So you, you use the words, you know, I need to make it stick, right? So yeah. this, this triggered for me uh, uh, a, a wonderful connection. So one of my professors at Stanford um, was a gentleman by the name Chip Heath, uh, who wrote a book called Made to Stick. And it was kind of, he was covering the materials in the book, um, in the class before the book was written, but then the book was written and it sort of became quite popular in in the kind of a geek community of communication focused people that I, I'm proud to be a member of. Uh, and uh, it was using a lot of behavioral science, neuroscience uh, mm -hmm. concepts to illustrate kind of that whatever is your kind of communication goals, right? How do you create uh, a sticky experience is important, and and the, and then later Chip wrote a book about experiences because I think experiences are one of the things that sort of allows us to break through the noise of everyday minutia. And so, like if you have a truly memorable experience that you're able to create when somebody joins the company or when a customer first lands to the web page after you work so hard to get them there and paid so much money <laughs> to get them there. And then, you know, they have a great experience versus the opposite is like the, you know, and so we um, we're very passionate both for the podcast in, but also in my own startup, like to, to create these sticky, brilliant experiences and, and even moving beyond just remembering something, right? Like it's, are you changing your behavior as a result of doing something, right? Because the ultimate goal, is, you know, is to actually drive behavioral change that becomes a, you know, a pattern. And so one of the tragedies that we kind of to come back to the sticking and experience creation. So one of the tragedies we see in the typical B2B communications, as an example, is that you pay a lot of money, spend a lot of time to get a customer or potential customer engaged, or you kind of to bring in an employee into the team. And then you create like this sort of dump them in front of a PDF of some kind or or something that's completely uninspiring. It may be on brand, but it just like doesn't doesn't create you know anything special. And since it's one of the first interaction points, it tends to be more memorable, right? Or if it's um something that um you know really you know creates your your sense to to uh uh, to kind of sh skip a few steps in a long and, and tortuous journey of getting somebody's kind of to be you know to get to get more of their mind share, uh, and you miss that opportunity and it's gone. And so I'm curious, like, what do you do in your consumer practice? What do you see some of the challenges with working with more, you know, government? You mentioned that before the mm -hmm. call, B two B clients that are that have this more complex content and it's harder to escape you know, escape the the gravity of some of the content, you know, con heavy content, you know, what what have you seen work and what have you seen starting to work for, you know, in consumerizing particular, the this, this sort of the, the, the more complex and B2B content, so to speak, that we have to share? Yeah, look, I, I think, you know, when you talk about complexity, that means different things to different people. And in our business, we... We, we fundamentally shy away from rinse and repeat thinking, right? So there's not a belief that we can distill everything down into one way of doing things. And in fact, it's, it's almost the opposite. The way that we win and the way that we help our merchants grow is by helping them find their unique place in the market, how they stand out, right? And so 
I, th I think a lot of businesses think about how you fit in and how do you become similar. Our job is to help our businesses stand out. So we we look at ways of being different. And in fact, one of the you know one of the core statements that we started off with was it's better to be different than better, right? Which means you're not competing against people to be better than they are. You're actually looking at the market and going, what's the differentiator? How do we be something that's not the same? And I think that goes down to a couple of um, key points. One is the reason that we repeat things over and over again is because we try and stay simple, right? We mm. try and stay focused on simple things so that we don't get overwhelmed with the complexity. And part of the challenge when you're particularly dealing with big B2B companies who have very complex environments, both from a technology stack, potentially from a product set or a service set, uh, and definitely from uh, just the scale of operation, right? You're thinking mm -hmm. international supply chains, you're thinking um, the types of organizational structure that they have to have in there, everything from salespeople to manufacturing to you know, people in there that literally count nuts and bolts, right? The the organizational structure as well as the technology structure is a really difficult thing to overcome if you don't spend the time understanding it. And so building intimacy with the businesses that we work with, particularly the ones that we're looking at bringing in as a new client, we spend a lot of time trying to understand who they are, what they're about, what makes them tick, you know, what are the real problems, right? Most businesses will come to us and go, we need a new website. Mm -hmm. And the answer is, tell us why and show us what you've currently got. And often we actually spend a year working with them on the existing platform because they're just not getting the most out of it, yeah. right? It's better to, you know, you think about buying a new car, right? You don't buy a new car and then see another one that you like, you know, the next day and go and buy that one. You use your car for a number of years, right? You get some mileage out of it. You get to a certain point that makes you feel comfortable, and then you feel you've got value out of it and then you're willing to move on. Well, the digital assets are the same thing. Mm. You know, there's no point in jumping onto the next best trend if it's not going to be significantly more valuable for you. Um, so we spend a lot of time. And there's no guarantee that you'll you'll get any better at using the next. Exactly. If you haven't figured out how to use the one that you already have. So like we see people that are like, oh, I'm, you know, I don't want to create any more PowerPoints. And then you look at their PowerPoint is like, you don't know how to even use PowerPoint, <laughs> you know, as an example, you know, let's not be too blunt about it. So maybe you kind of, you know, figure that out, you know, figure out how to distribute it and, you know, Hey, we can help with that. But, but like, you mm -hmm. know, some people that are like, Oh, I'm, I don't know how to, you know, create a beautiful thing. Um, but I want to, I, I think because I buy this new widget or I hire this, I could all of a sudden, you know, magic is going to happen and I'm going to become a, a wizard at, at creating beautiful things. And I, you, do you, you see that kind of as a, some sort of human mental block or what, what's your take on that? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I think two things, right? The businesses that we work with, particularly the the founder led ones or the, you know, ones built from the ground up, there's definitely a, a you know, a, a piece of heart that's attached to the business and the brand, mm -hmm. right? So you're not talking necessarily about true you know only purely commercial outcomes you're talking about the presentation of someone's passion right it's the it's their life they've built it from the ground up you know they've mortgaged the house you know 10 years ago and they've come out the back end of that and now they're into this kind of great great environment where they've got a, a proper proper business you know you can't take away that that wish to be you know i want my brand to be beautiful but i guess the you know, there's so much more advances in technology to make it easier to launch things, right? Like you think about low code and no code, right? You think yeah. about some of the work that you're doing, the the pace at which you can take an asset and translate it into something new. And there's a lot of that going on. If you look at the, you know, we're on the cusp. I, I say we, we uh, we're there now, but it will be fully better into our culture. Um, AI will, will literally transform the way that we operate in good ways, right? Some in bad, but I think fundamentally it's good because it will extend our skill sets. It will give us more capability to do better and faster and smarter work. Um, and if you look at that, the ability to get something live, to get an experience, customized, personalized, um, deeply oriented towards human interaction and learning all the time, you know, what's our job in that space? Our job is to help craft that. Our job is to 
lead that journey and take our clients particularly and our team members mm-hmm. on that journey so that they can find their place in this new world right and everyone's place is different right there's not a you know the, the faster that we try and simplify and get to the middle the more vanilla everything becomes so our job is to stand out our job is to be different and it sounds like, you know, if I, if I pick up on the theme, uh, you know, you mentioned earlier velocity, right? Like, so, so when, when I think about AI for us, it's like, it's the velocity, it's the velocity of doing business, you know, obvious things. So by the way, we just launched uh, our own AI content chat, which allows you to read any, like could be thousand page book or presentation it could be in a few weeks, a library of such books and presentation. And you could like, get the analysis of it, you know, and then get to the right page to get more context if you want to learn more, right? Like, so you kind of instantly are bypassing a ton of research and you're not doing some Google or some sort of fantastic AI that's confusing things. You're actually reading stuff that you've put together or something that you trust. And so mm-hmm. that's um, that's kind of a velocity for consumption, right? But but there's also like, a obviously we talked about velocity for creation, Right, and you're you're doing a bit of uh, a bit of that. We're doing a bit of that of how do you quickly enable somebody to transform a static asset into interactive. So, mm-hmm. where do you think um, you know? And I saw that you you guys are using tools like Algolia, which we also you know love and and uh, leverage. Um, so, where do you see the sort of consumption o- around AI versus creation around AI? I think so far the, a lot of talk has been about creation. But we actually, mm. that's not really the full story uh, because it generated, it just happens to be called generative. So people think you're just generating new stuff all the time. But I think, how you know, part of it feels like we're making it easy for humans to, to navigate through complexity. What are your thoughts on that sort of creation versus consumption? Um, yeah, look, this, I, I think this is a really big topic. I was fortunate enough to uh, sit on a panel two weeks ago at Google Marketing Live. So this is their, their premier event to announce the, you know, their new ad uh, tools and platforms. Um, and they run this globally. And it was the first time that was in New Zealand. And I was fortunate enough to be uh, a representative to talk on that panel. And I think if you look at even in that single sphere, everywhere you look today, there will be AI already, right? Whether you're writing an email and Gmail, Mm-hmm. And it's already suggesting what next words to say, right? That's the basic stuff that's there, yeah. right through to what you're talking about in terms of generative, the, the the creative side of it, be able to extend or create new things. I think the, the, there's two parts to it. One is um, it's just, it's an education journey and you have to be excited about learning new things, mm-hmm. right? That curiosity, that ability to see the benefits of of just diving into something, figuring it out and adding it to your arsenal is really powerful and we have to be excited by it. I think a lot of people are worried about the impact that it will have on everything from jobs to, to the environment, to, you know, privacy, to a whole bunch of, you know, different challenges that we're already addressing anyway with the the power of the internet and the power of technology. AI is here and it's not going away. And unlike trends, it's already baked in. So we either grab hold of it and all of the big, hairy, scary questions that people are asking will either be answered or like we've seen in a number of other areas will be forgotten, right? Because it's just something that's already there. I also think for our business specifically, you're right, we use a lot of tools that are are, are, are AI driven from the ground up. Algolia is one that's a on-site search and personalization tool. Uh, if we look at a tool like Nosto, which is a merchandising tool for websites, particularly commerce, that helps you find the right product at the right time, um, you know, right through to chatbots and help um, desks and you know everything that we do. I'm super excited about it for our business because it actually helps us branch into new spaces that we can't do at the moment. So, you know, creative spaces. We're very good at user experience and conversion rate optimization and all of those nuances of making websites even better and faster and more attractive to consumers. 
But what we're not great at doing is taking content assets and extending them out. You know, you mentioned that taking static assets and turning them into moving assets, adding music, you know, writing copy, like all of that stuff is going to become a lot easier and a lot faster. The challenge, I think, is that if we let it, it will become vanilla. It will all race towards the same place because that's what it's designed to do. It's designed to aggregate yeah. things, not to branch out. We're all going to become beige. I just, yeah. I, I, I just, yeah. I, I, uh, I, well, we'll all be wearing uh, black, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, um, and it's and it's, so that that is a kind of an interesting dilemma, right? Like I think can you can you can you tweak it to maximize creativity, right? And I think that's mm -hmm. uh, and one of the things that sort of annoys me a little bit about um, about some of the people that are you know writing these research pieces, right? On like oh AI is going to take over everything. Um, is that they, <laughs> yeah, I don't know how credible they are, right? Like you're using AI tools, your personality clearly is somebody who loves to use new technology to advance challenges, right? Um, you work at an organization that achieved hyper growth um, in, a, in a people business, which is even harder, frankly, than in a technology business like ours. So hats off to you on kind of on, on doing that. You. So you're you're kind of in this sort of innovation mode. A lot of people writing about, you know, AI are people that either were writing about blockchain yesterday or <laughs> somebody in the in a consultancy organization that, you know, frankly couldn't innovate their way out of a paper bag and you know, are just kind of regurgitating some things and doing some sort of high level analytics, putting out, you know, 80 page report on how AI is going to change everything as a PDF, mind you, right? Like, which, <laughs> you know, like is unreadable, and you know, like, so again, maybe very smart people, Mary, but maybe way more analytical capable of people than I am. Um, and people that work at a brand that kind of, you know, supports that, but, uh, you know, I, I, you know, you've you've have a long journey in the tech world, and you've always adopted new things. What's your general take on the sort of opinion setting uh, and congruency that you know between the people that actually do it and the people that talk about it or advise on it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would generally take most advice from people who are practitioners, right? People who are already in that space and they're looking at it and they're showing real world examples of where it works or where it doesn't, right? And and you're right, we play with a lot of technology and we've been caught out on, you know, by jumping on a trend too early and seeing, you know, the first, the fast starters fail and then the second or the, or the, the fast followers succeed. Um, I think people who sit there and proclaim big, bold opinion statements about AI as, as a concept are missing the nuance of of the fact that this is not just one thing. Yeah. It's a million different yeah. you know, executions of it, right? And, and people think you know, it's all generative here. AI just because large language models came in. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like it's yeah. And, 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 of it, right? <laughs> yeah, but you think about when social media came out, right? When Facebook popped up uh, and everyone kind of jumped on because it was brand new and then off sprung you know, 20 other different platforms, right? And before that, you had MySpace and then you had, you know, other blogging platforms and all that sort of stuff. The reality is, is that when good things happen and people see the power of it, it will survive. And AI has been here for way too long for it to not have an impact and it already is having an impact. It's how we decide to use it going forward, right? If you think, let's, you know, but let's talk about dead things right the metaverse right it was such like it was a huge thing it was all that was talked about in the creative industry a year and a half ago and it's forgotten right it's fundamentally like everyone came and then everyone left um but this isn't something like that it isn't kind of jumping into blockchain or you know you don't have to be all in it's just there and i think if we look at it as uh as business owners and we look at it, the power that it can have as a tool for us to be better at what we do, then you have to be excited, right? Like every new thing, caution, 
you know, test, learn, you know, learn how to use it, right? It's a tool. You don't just turn up to a building site and figure out how to build a house, right? You've got to learn. You've got to go through that. What I live in of, that house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Um, so, and that's what excites me is that our people have more to learn, right? Because anyone who stops learning stands still and the whole world runs over you. And I, th- I think like, like the one thing I would say is what what's changed is there is no excuse not to learn anymore, right? Like exactly. used to be like, okay, to be, to learn the AI, you really did need to go to, you know, top tier school, you know, get, get mentored by top tier faculty. And, and, you know, now I think at least at a basic level, right? Like with some no code tools, right? Like an application. Mm-hmm your low code right like you don't need to do that much right the the bar has been lowered so why aren't you you know taking advantage of that is sort of the yeah exactly the question and and I, I think there's something to this too you know back to human nature and kind of like our ability to process change right so um i think a lot of what we focus and what a you know great experience focused leaders that you know we pay attention to they they kind of uh create the types of experiences that a motivate you but b also shrink the complexity shrink the change uh that's ahead of people so they are not like feeling this overwhelm right and mm. give up on doing anything and go back to watching downton abbey you know back to, <laughs> like you know some stuff which is lovely by the way right and you know i have uh I have uh, been exposed to a few episodes and (laughs) found the humor quite charming, but it's sort of like the, the, it's sort of the opposite almost of, um, you know, moving on and kind of trying to reimagine the future. So, you know, as parting words of wisdom, right? Like how do you help, you know, your clients and for yourself and seriously kind of, kind of accelerate this excitement uh, and shrink the, the fear of you know messing up or fear of kind of you know, being mm. loaded and and not doing anything and it, you know I, I you mentioned simplicity so I'm wondering if that's one of the themes but I you know I'm curious to to kind of get your your take on this. Yeah, I learned this lesson really hard um, and it took a long time. Right, I I, I wish I had known it in my twenties, but the concept of controlling the things that you can control, right. Mm. And one of those things is yourself. You can turn up to any situation. You can control how you turn up and what you do with yourself, right? No one else can, no one else is in charge of you. No one else is telling you what to do. No one else can can truly control you. And so that's the first place you start. How do I turn up every day for my staff? How do I, my team, how do I turn up into the meetings that I have with my clients, with my partners? I turn up with enthusiasm because I tell you what, if I'm not enthusiastic about it, there's no point in me being there. Right, so that's the that's one thing that I control. The second thing is a realization. Well, that, that just pretty much that, cancels the entire French market. And the, <laughs> you know, the, 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 I'm, I'm I'm taking this one in France right now, so I'm just <laughs> I get I get the right to to make it. But there, that's interesting. So you're basically kind of bringing bringing the energy. You know, if you're going to do something, you're going to do it well, and you're going to bring the energy that kind of radiates. Yeah. This. So, like, and this applies to you. It probably applies to the digital work that you're doing, right? If you're going to do it, absolutely. Do it well. Okay, got it. Yeah, and I, and I think once you once you come to this pure realization that no one else controls the way that you are going to approach something, it it frees you up to be able to look at anything and see potential and possibility. And so wherever we look, like we deal with some pretty hard stuff, right? Like what what's happened and. The Ukraine, we had over 200 people there. And when that kicked off in February of last year, that was, I mean, that's the hardest thing that I've ever had to face personally. When I know, you know, 200 people that I, that I talk to mm-hmm. weekly mm-hmm. are in trouble, right? They're in a, in a place of turmoil. So I think that stuff really comes home to roost where you know there's nothing you can do to stop that. All you can do is what we turn up every day and do, which is support our people. Um, and so when you have that really pure baseline fear of safety of humans and you realize that you can only do what you can do, it's quite empowering because it means that you free yourself of worry. You free yourself of being overwhelmed. Um, 
the reason I said that I repeat myself is because I believe that people need to hear good things often. Mm. So they need to hear things repeated so that it just becomes second nature for them, right? My whole leadership team will say, as soon as I start saying the two things that are important to me, they'll repeat it immediately. Yes, we know, blah, 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 blah. But that's great for me because it means they, you know, they actually get it and they start saying it to other people and it's infectious, right? So energy and passion and drive and curiosity and the hunger to learn is infectious and people get in behind that stuff. They want to be part of that. And if you show that to your clients, you show that hunger to listen and learn about their business, learn about what drives them, learn about what makes their business work and what doesn't. You know, all of a sudden you can have this really simple conversation with them saying, I've been thinking about your business. Here's an idea. Or I've been thinking about your business. Have you thought about this? Um, and these are really powerful, simple statements that have very deep and long tail impacts. And that's, you know, our business is about having impact. We're going to find simple ways to do that. So it's really about caring and listening and then bringing that energy in. So when you put it that way, it sounds pretty soft, but I, I think there's a lot of power in that. Well, let, let, but, but so, and it's oversimplifying, <laughs> but <laughs> let, let's complicate it, right? Like, so you're in the digital context, right? And you're maybe you're, you're, um, you're your customer, you put yourself in your customer's shoes, right? And so what, what mm -hmm. listening means, it, you know, in, in the sense is kind of the digital, digital body language, right? Are you paying attention to what they're doing? You can't, hop on a zoom with them because they're on a website or they're you know in a document yes. or so, like if it's a b2b uh service so we we stole frankly this idea of a digital body language from more of a consumer digital world and we're applying it to you know ourselves we're applying it to the kind of complex messages where typically it's sort of you know here's a you know attachment you know good luck you know um and then like you meet later and say, oh, did you see the thing I put on page 54? And you're like, <laughs> and no, I never got because that was attachment number four in your email of attachments. <laughs> and, you know, and so <laughs> this is sort of what we've learned is that like people like often are very ignorant of what's actually going on and they kind of make up stories because we're humans and we make mm -hmm. up stories and it's like, we're going to win that deal. And the client has never even looked at your stuff and you're in the column C and they're like, there's a sort of hard reckoning that's coming. So um, back to kind of given the power of kind of really caring and kind of understanding what's going on, right? And and we know that the what people actually do is more important what they say they do or what they intend to do, right? Because it's the actual like it's 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 the it's it's the true measurability. So we bring that you know outside of just Google Analytics universe to or Adobe Analytics, maybe in your case, right? Like to uh, to anybody uh, who shares, you know, even their their one, you know, their presentation or some sort of ebook masterpiece. What are you? What have you found, right? Like from working with so many clients, such great brands around the digital behavior. How is it changing? You know, what's what's happening? What are you know? How are the bars are, you know, changed? during pandemic and then post obviously now and then maybe was the recessionary environment right now like is there another change and so any any sort of words of wisdom across that spectrum would be would be helpful for all of us <laughs> oh look if i was dealing with a b2c merchant it, it's a really hard conversation because they're very oriented towards this month and and that next sale and um and you know their, their trading mindset is very short-term focused right they need results tomorrow not next year um and and it's cold comfort when you talk about change and state that that's the one thing that is constant is change so if we are not comfortable with change if we're not comfortable being uncomfortable then it's pretty hard to navigate through right that's where i think a lot of our businesses get really stuck because the technology landscape changes, right? They're stuck with legacy tech and they're trying to figure out how to get off it because their whole business is now anchored into this technology space that is holding them back. Mm -hmm. And we're helping them find ways to strangle that out, right? Putting new things on top of it, creating 
you know, a better interface for that customer experience layer. That means that your old ERP or back office system can kind of keep sitting there ticking away while you, you know, build out the capex that you need to to you know get rid of it. Um, and that goes back to that statement of let's try and use what you've got so that we can almost pay for the change mm. and the work that we do together. So that's one way of doing it is just helping businesses navigate that kind of next step, right? Just it's just one more step and then another step, right? Um, and often and and to your point around these people who write these big kind of eighty page white papers around kind of the power or the fear or the 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 danger or the downfall that's coming from AI and whatever else is out there is the reality is, is that none of it is true until it happens. Mm. And so, you know, don't wait, right? Don't fear it because if you don't move forward, if you don't take that next step, then what are you missing out on? You know, like a lot of, it's really interesting, Alex, like a, a lot of the businesses that we work with always and, and currently leave so much opportunity on the table because they're just, they're paralyzed by what to do next in the technology space. And our business is designed to help them decide what's next, right? Most merchants, whether you're B2B or B2C, lose sales every day because they don't have really basic stuff set up to follow up a customer's interaction, right? You think about abandoned carts, mm. just sending an email afterwards to a customer to say, hey, you've left this behind. That has such a massive impact on conversion. So do that. That's really simple. Do that one thing. Once you've got that, you've captured that little cherry that keeps, you know, falling off the table and then do the next thing, right? Then add in AI powered personalization and, you know, and loyalty and, you know, all of those kind of great things, but just take one step at a time. And that I think is um, probably our biggest advice to most businesses is don't think about the destination. Think about the journey. Think about what that next step What's is. What's the next step in help. the journey, right? Yeah, it's and like, I'm going to change what, everything. I'm going to rebuild the website, and you're like, yeah, and you're like, hey, just you know, when you send your website link in the email, maybe you know, yeah. a thumbnail there that sort of yeah. you yeah. know yeah. kind of tells the people what the website is going to do for them and how it's going to make their world better. Uh, so exactly is like these. So there is actually value in this sort of incrementalism because it it helps you get momentum. And it helps you not get kind of overwhelmed by the complexity exactly. and the cost yeah. of the big change, right? Is that kind of... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look, I mean, technology costs a lot of money. And, you know, we're working in some fairly big, with, with some fairly big numbers to implement some some pretty transformational, uh, um, you know, projects within companies. And that's really exciting. But we also work with very you know, much smaller businesses that have very tight control over their budgets and they need to extract exceptional returns from their spend. Um, and so you have to be adaptable in that space, right? Yes, we will definitely take that, you know, that million dollar project, but we'll also say yes to that, you know, $5,000 a month piece of work that will help this business take that incremental next step. Because a year down the track, that business is then going, all right, we're ready, right? We've just reached this next horizon. Uh, we've been planning for this. This is our this is our cutoff to allow us to then spend going forward, um, and that's a good thing because that means their business is ready to do it, not kind of mortgaging the the house to kind of you know pay for the next the next layer of growth. And that's what we've seen growth. You know, if if I if we had a sat down seven years ago and said our business is going to look like it is today, no, we we wouldn't believe ourselves. And so it's just the power of being open to what's coming and adaptable and and hungry, always hungry. That's brilliant, Paul. So I think the easy next step for our audience is to go to over, overdose.digital and take the next step and learn more about <laughs> what they could be doing for their brand. Um, Paul, what, what other ways to, uh, our audience could get in touch with you? Uh, LinkedIn's a really good way. Um, and then the website, so I'd say either either channels are, is the best place. Um, our website's pretty straightforward. Uh, there's there's contact details there, um, or you can reach out to me direct on LinkedIn. Paul Pritchard, it's pretty straightforward to find me. I'm the only one in New Zealand. Excellent. Paul, thank you so much for the conversation, examples, inspiration, and we're going to 
uh, take some of your lessons in building your company and um, in building uh, amazing consumer grade experiences. And we're gonna work really, really hard, I promise, on translating that in, in areas that are a little bit under, under undernourished as far as the digital experience is concerned. So thank you for inspiring us and sharing your insights. I appreciate just having the opportunity to come on and uh, this conversation with you, Alex, has been, it's been really exciting. So thank you. Appreciate it. Great. And on behalf of all of the Ukrainians, as a former uh, Ukrainian USSR native uh, from Kiev, I, I, you know, I was just delighted on a personal note to hear how you've, um, you know, you've managed uh, to first and form first build a business in Ukraine um, and, Stick stick was a kind of hard situation. I think we 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 have the same challenges at a at a minor at a more minor scale, less than two hundred people. And uh, and I have to say, it's been kind of an inspiring example to see so some of our Ukrainian colleagues have persevered and stuck to um, to, yes. to more than just being stuck in a in a in a terrible situation. Yeah. It's a it's a very strong co uh, country and a very strong people. I'm I'm in awe. I'm humbled by our people. So there you go. Even war can inspire you know great inspire inspire us uh, to do better. Mm -hmm. So with that, Paul, thank you, thank you. Great conversation and and a human conversation at that. Uh, I really appreciate this and best of luck to you and the team. Thank you. Take care. Thank you.